Hello and welcome. Today I am going to talk about another aspect of mutations that is the randomness and non-adaptive nature of mutations. As you know, mutations occur in two ways. One is spontaneous mutation. Another, the mutations can be induced by physical or chemical agents. We call them as mutagens. Today, I'm going to focus on the first way of uh, mutations, that is spontaneous mutations. And in that also, the question which I am going to discuss with you is the randomness of the spontaneous mutations. And when we talk about randomness, actually it is at two levels. One, whether the mutations occur on a specific point in the genome, in a specific gene in a genome, at a given point of time in a genome. That is one side of the randomness. Another is the, the adaptive advantage of a mutation for survival of a cell or an organism in the current environmental situation. Okay. So there are two points I'm raising here in terms of randomness. One is whether in a genome, there is a fixed site, fixed gene, preferred gene, preferred site where mutations occur. And secondly, the second point, which I'm going to discuss in detail is whether a mutation, as and when it happens, whether it has an adaptive advantage for a organism or a cell to survive in the current growth conditions, or they occur anytime during the passage of the cell or um, or or when we consider in terms of for, for an organism, it can happen in any generation uh, without having an adaptive advantage for that organism in that environment where it is growing. Okay, but as and when the organism or the cell is challenged or faces that uh, environment, then these mutations which are occurring previously gives an advantage to the cell or the organism so that it can survive. Okay, so now before we uh, really go into the details of this, we should uh, try to revise certain facts, okay? About the first part of the randomness, what we know already today, that there is no way by which we can predict or find out that which cell of an organism is going to have the mutation or which gene in a cell or in an organism is going to mutate. But having said this, every gene in a cell or in an organism can undergo mutation at a characteristic rate from prokaryote to eukaryote. So every gene in an organism can undergo mutation. So it is random basically. But we cannot predict that 
this gene the, in this organism in this cell at this point of time is going to mutate okay so we we cannot predict or we cannot find out that which gene is going to um, uh, to mutate at a given point of time okay now secondly that there is a possibility or a probability that a gene or every gene can undergo mutation in a cell okay and therefore there is also a possibility and probability that a mutant allele of a gene will occur in a population of a particular size okay whether we are able to um, trace that mutation or not but you take any population of any organism sizable population of an organism if we say then you will definitely get a mutated allele uh, in that so you have wild type and you will have a mutated allele also so these are some of the facts that uh, we know about spontaneous mutations that they are random they can occur anywhere anytime Okay, now the question which I'm going to uh, examine a little bit seriously is about the randomness of the mutations with respect to when they occur in a cell or in an organism, whether they have uh, any advantages uh, or any advantage in the current environment okay means these spontaneous mutations uh, occur irrespective to whether they are advantageous in the current environment or not they just occur and the second possibility in this is that that mutations have a tendency to occur to give an advantage to the cell to survive in the current environment means the mutations are they occur the spontaneous mutations occur in a cell when it faces a adverse environmental conditions and um, and they give an advantage to the cell to survive in those adverse conditions okay so i'm going to examine these two possibilities about the randomness of mutation that is whether when a mutation occur uh, spontaneous mutation occur uh, irrespective of whether they are advantageous in the current environment or not where the cell is growing second possibility is that mutations have a tendency to give advantages uh, advantage to the cell or to the organism uh, to survive in the current environment okay so keep this in mind these are two possibilities i'm trying to explore with an experimental evidence now this is very classical and uh, very very uh, you can say historical experimentation done to answer this question once for all that mutations are random and non-adaptive in nature okay it means uh, 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 the experimental evidence which suggests is the spont about the spontaneous mutations that they are random and they are non-adaptive um, non-adaptive uh, in terms of uh, advantage to the organism or to the cell to survive in the current environmental conditions. Now, <clears throat> this also tests the Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired traits. You know, that's the basis of evolution. Okay. So, uh, these the, the experiment which I'm going to discuss with you 
is performed by Luria and Dalberg way back in 1943. And there was a belief soon after the mutations were discovered that mutations occur in an organism to give an adaptive advantage for surviving in the current environmental situation for any organism. That was, that was the belief for a long time. And then this work done by Luria and Dalberg corrected that hypothesis, okay? And what they did here, they took E. coli cell as the experimental tool, you know, and, and uh, uh, they challenged these cells with phage, T1 phage. So they took E. coli, which was sensitive to T1 phage. You know, the, the, the bacteriophage, which eats or survive on bacteria, we call them as bacteriophage. And T1 phage is the one which uh, eats on E. coli. So if, 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 you, if, if the phage finds its host, that is E. coli, it uh, eats and survive and multiplies. You know, that's the, that's the way. So they took a population of E. coli, which was sensitive to T1 phage. Okay. So now the theory that they uh, tested here is the adaptive theory. Now, what is this, this adaptive theory? Adaptive theory stated or states that cells are induced to become resistant under adverse conditions of growth means when a cell is exposed to adverse conditions, um, it, is, it is induced to become resistant. Now, how it is induced to become resistant? That is by way of mutations. Okay. So that is one um, uh, aspect. And another aspect was that, which is the mutation theory. One is the adaptive theory. Another is the mutation theory. Mutation theory is that, that, uh, Random events of mutations confer selective advantage to the cell. Means the mutation will occur at any point of time in a cell, but they give an adaptive advantage, you know, <clears throat> when the cells are exposed to the adverse conditions. Okay, so they, 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 let, me, let me make it very clear. Uh, or the difference between the adaptive theory and the mutation theory, adaptive theories, according to adaptive theory, the cells are induced to become resistant under adverse conditions. It means whatever preparation need to be done to have that resistance in, uh, in a cell to survive through the adverse conditions done when the cell faces uh, the challenge. And secondly, the mutation theory, it says that any random, I mean, a random event of mutations occur, but they confer a selective advantage to cells when they are exposed to the selection pressure or adverse environmental conditions. Keep these two things, two theories in mind. And so to test which of these two theories about randomness of uh, mutations holds true. That is among the adaptive theory, which I explained, and mutation theory. Which one of the two uh, uh, is true? Uh, uh, Luria and Derber performed a very classical experiment uh, taking as uh, T1 quad sensitive E. coli as the experiment tool. And I will explain this experiment uh, and follow it with me very, very carefully uh, what they did and uh, what were the observations and then what conclusions they drew. So, so they started with uh, the culture of E. coli, which is sensitive to T1 phage. 
they were grown and thin. Uh, then uh, they were divided into two batches, uh, single subculture and the multiple subcultures. Okay. And they were uh, allowed to grow here and here means in the single subculture or multiple subcultures until each of these tubes or cultures here and here they reaches to the concentration of cells that is 10 to the power 3 cells per ml that's the cell density okay so it must have undergone uh, generations means 1 to 2 2 to 4 like that so each one of them multiplied a number of times to reach to this concentration 10 to the power of 3 cells per ml in each of these cultures and after this then the equal amount of sample say for example 10 ml or 5 ml was taken and spread on these plates which were having t1 phage already plated on them Okay, so these bacterial cells were plated on the T1 phage plates and the number of T1 phage plated on each of these plates here and here is the same as the number of cells, E. coli cells. So there is one to one kind of uh, interaction you may see. Okay, so we are, what we are trying to do is we are giving a challenging environment where a sensitive cell is exposed to the threat of T1 phage. You know, and T1 phage and E. coli, T1 phage infects E. coli cell and eats it away. You know, so keep this in mind. So that's how this experiment was done. Okay, in a, as a single um, subculture or multiple multiple subcultures. I will explain to you what, why this two things were done here in a while. Okay, now <clears throat> these dots which you see is the uh, number of E. coli T1 for resistant cells, cell colonies. These dots indicate here, here, here and here is the E. coli resistant to T1 for Okay. So it means one dot is a group of E. coli cell, which has erosion from, of course, single cell. By its multiplication, it forms colony. You know, that's what happens in case of bacteria. One cell, which is with, in whether in the challenging environment or normal also, it grows and forms colonies, you know. So all these do dots includes or indicates uh, the uh, the the colonies of resistant cells because the sensitive one has disappeared. So whatever cell you are seeing here are all resistant to um, to um, T1 phage. Okay. Now now <clears throat> if if we go by so these are the observations. Now, let us look at the first adaptive theory, where cells are induced to become resistant under adverse conditions of growth. That is the adaptive theory. And you, if, you, if, you, if you take that theory and look at these results, wherein we are exposing equal number of cells to equal number of phage, and you see a variation i mean uh, here and also here you know from the same batches of cells you see there is no resistant cell in this plate here 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 only one two like that and then here you see multiple colonies which are resistant to t1 phage okay now if we go by adaptive theory it means that cell uh, the mutation occurred to give adaptive advantage uh, to the cell in the current environment condition now if that is true in that case you should have seen or got 
equal number of colonies, nearly equal number of colonies, you know, in all the plates. Because all the cells are exposed to the same threat from T1 phage, you know, and they should have uh, responded to that threat equally everywhere, everywhere. But that is not happening here. That is not happening here. So how to explain this? Let us go to the second possibility, that is the mutation theory, which is states that random events of mutation confer selective advantage to cell. Means mutation can occur randomly anytime, but it will give an adaptive or selectable advantage when it is exposed or the cell is, or organism is exposed to a threat from the environment in which it is living or growing. So if we go by that uh, theory or concept, see, now, if a mutation occurred here, you know, at, in, at, at, during the time of growth, it happened here, or it can happen here, it can happen here individually in each of these, these, uh, these tubes, it can happen anywhere, you know, before the cells were exposed to the um, threat or the selectable uh, agent, or in this case, T1 watch. So what I'm trying to say is that if a mutation is occurring any time before the cell is exposed to the T1 watch, then what, what will happen? Okay, so... So if you see here, you took uh, a, a single subculture here, okay, where if there were 10 cells, for example, or, or, or 10 cells, for example, they got a random mutation. And that mutation was such, which can give an adaptive advantage to the cell when it uh, encounters a challenge, okay? So if those 10 cells during the growth became more 10, 20, 30, I mean, depending on the cycles the cell has undergone during this subculture. And when you take, uh, after mixing these cells and spread an equal number of cells here, you can see, you know, uh, nearly same <clears throat> number of uh, colonies you are seeing here in this. You know, four, three, four, five, four, two. On an average, if you see, each plate had almost same number of uh, 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 T1 resistant cells. If you come here in this side, where a small or multiple small batch cultures were initiated, they were grown until the the cell density was ten to twelve cell for uh, for an all. You know, so now in this case, suppose you know. A, a, the mutation, random mutation can occur here or here, 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 individual. We don't know, we can't predict when the mutation is going to take place, okay? Or it may not take place at all, you know? So if you see here, you know, the absence of any resistant colony shows that this batch of cells, they did not mutate at all. They did not, I mean, they did not, uh, undergo a random mutation which gives the cell any adaptive advantage when they were, they were exposed to T1 phage. You know, one, two, three. And, and this variation which you see here, for example, one uh, colony you see in this sample. So it means that when you harvested the cell to plate on this uh, T1 phage, just before that one cell uh, undergone random mutation which had an ad adaptive advantage here. So you see a single colony. This colony is because of that one cell undergoing mutation at this point of time, not here when it was exposed to. Similarly here, you know, this cell, before it was harvested and put on T1 part, it underwent one to two, one that cell divide into two. So you see two colonies here. Two to four means the cell here it underwent two divisions before it was plated here, you know, 
so because this culture as i told you was subcultured and 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 uh, cultured for a time period that each tube reaches to this cell density okay so and similarly here if you see here multiple uh, colonies it means the cell uh, underwent that random mutation at a very early stage of growth so that it multiplied a number of times before this culture was spread on this plate and you see plenty of colonies coming here okay so this experiment if you if you now uh, now put two and two together you will see that random spontaneous mutation they occurred on their own without giving any adaptive advantage for cell to grow in the current environment. For example, if this T1 FOG uh, resistant, I mean, a gene mutation which gave an adaptive advantage is bacterial cell to survive here, it happened at this stage, at this stage, you know, or at this stage, there is no FOG here, but mutation occurred. And that mutation, because of that mutation in the cell, when the cell was exposed to T1 FOG threat, they could, they could survive here. And others died, actually. You are spreading 10 to the power of 3 cells per ml density, and what you see, only a few colonies. What happened to other cells? Other cells died. They are sensitive. They were sensitive, so they died. Okay? So only those cells which had undergone random mutation and that mutation was such which gave them an adaptive advantage here or here for that matter, you know. So this simple experiment clearly, um, clearly uh, answered this question with which I started that whether a random mutation gives any adaptive advantage for a cell to survive in the current uh, environmental conditions? So answer is no. Mutation occur here. The mutation theory is finally uh, confirmed that it's a random event of mutation which occurs and gives this uh, selective advantage to the cell means a mutation will occur, but as and when a cell is challenged or an organism is challenged for that matter, these mutations help the organism or a cell to survive through that. When other their, uh, members of the population will die, few will survive. And that is what uh, survival of the fittest is, uh, one of the evolutionary theory that when a population faces environmental challenge, uh, when most of the individuals die, only few survive. Now, what are these few? These few are because they have undergone some mutations, some changes at the genetic level, which helps them in uh, to survive uh, through those uh, environmental conditions. Okay, so the conclusion here is very simple, that the mutations arise, randomly and i'm referring to spontaneous mutation all the all the while spontaneous mutations arise randomly with respect to selective advantage in the current environment it means they just occur they may have an advantage for surviving in the current environment or not but they occur randomly in the genome uh, and as far as site is concerned that cannot be predicted, as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, that it can happen uh, in, in any gene, in any part of the gene, uh, you know, uh, of a cell or, or an organism. Uh, but uh, it's not happening in, with, in response to a challenging environment. Okay. So I hope I have tried to uh, make you understand uh, this part. Uh, clearly. Um, so I will stop here. Thank you very much for uh, patient uh, listening to me. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please do so. And also hit the bell icon so that you get notification about my future, uh, uh, future uh, 
uh, videos. Thank you very much.